video two of the RF4E Phantom 2 build. Now, what I'm doing now is mm, getting kind of busy. Let's see if I can do this the best way you can see it. There, point this straight down. Alright, now I've got these fine molds seat belts here. And I'm going to show you. I've just completed this one and I'm going to show you what to do with this one here. So, got to be careful to properly cut these things off. There. Okay, so you got these little uh, injector marks here. Okay. Now, this is ABS right there ABS but you know, I had no problem gluing it onto here so you know the ABS does glue together with styrene a bit mostly I think it's just the styrene kind of um, conforms around the ABS and kind of glues itself to it and there okay so these are these little injection points. You gotta just take them all off. Just cut them all off. You just gotta go through all of them like this. To free up the straps. There. And get all these out of the way. And uh, like right here. So, and because they're ABS, they're easy to bend. It makes them nice and soft. Mm. There. Oops. Get that a little bit closer. There we go. Still got some more. Okay. There. Okay. Oops, one more. Okay, now, I have a 0.6 pin vise drill bit, uh, 0.6 drill bit in my pin vise here. This needs to get opened up. I need to have a hole in these parts here. in there. Help open them up a little bit more. That looks nice. That's how you do it. And I'm make sure these holes are a bit more widened, opened up a little bit more. There. Cool. Nice. Okay, we're done. I <clears throat> made a big, huge ass mistake. Um, I, I put the wrong engine can. I put the, the photo etch on the wrong engine can. Um, so what I did was I just uh, soaked this whole thing in, in uh, acetone, and it's undone the <clears throat> undone the. The, the super glue. <clears throat> there. Okay. Whew. 
All right, now I could just kind of bend this back into place and uh, redo that. Oh my gosh, this got a little bit bent here when I pulled it up, but it's not so bad, really. Man, oh my gosh, well, fortunately I was able to do that. I didn't like how that was seated in there anyways, so um, I'll do it better the second time. You might be asking yourself, well, why does he have four seats instead of just two? Uh -huh. Well, the reason why is because... I actually have... Dun, dun, dun. Let, me, let me zoom out here. This as well. I'm going to be building this. Oh my gosh, I just... I can't be stopped. I'm out of control. All right, that's why. Now, you may see I have augmented with wire. So I was using um, this uh, stainless steel wire here, 0.3 millimeters. And just like I had done it on the, the old Legacy kit, I just cut out segments and then super glued it and so now I have these neat little wires sticking out of the seats and they look great. Alright, so what I'm doing now, now I got this idea, I got this really cool magazine here. This is by Model Art Magazine. They did a whole thing on Phantoms. And this is a buildup of the 72nd scale Hasegawa RF4B Phantom 2. And um, Basically the same kind of airplane as what I'm building right now. Now they also use the the uh, fine molds, right? And with the fine molds pull rings and everything here. You see that? Of course you do. Shut up. So what I'm gonna do is uh, now they they said they use drafting tape. I don't have any drafting tape. I but I do have some one millimeter. masking tape and you can see I've put those uh, straps on this seat here now in order to uh, maintain my sanity I'm gonna pluck this off here now I'm gonna cut this off in little segments here so this is one millimeter width And with my toothpick, I'm going to stick this inside the internal curve here. All right. So I want this to go lay down flat underneath. Get in there, dude. All right. I have no patience for this. Get down there. You shall do what I tell you. Great. Okay, so now that's done. I'm gonna do the other one here. I figure it might be easier to do this now before I prime it. <sighs> but the other stuff, I'm going to prime those separately. Um, I paint them separately, sorry, the, the seat belts. So those are ABS plastic. And I'm going to put those down after I paint them separately. I'm going to airbrush them, paint them, and then lay them down on the seats later. Okay, come on. There we go. No, no, don't bend. You go that way, dork knob. Okay. I'm gonna use my knife instead. This is getting on my nerves here. Come on, jerk ass. You shall obey. There we go. Now. 
I have both straps in position. Let that toothpick go. Let's smooth this down flat here. Great. There, cool. That looks pretty nice, I think. Cool. I think these are looking fairly nice. Uh, as you can see, I've added more wires in the back here. So, yeah, there we go. This is ready for, for priming. Okay, time to put the flight yolks down. Great. So the main colors of the RF4EJ kit is the Oceanic Colors, and I, this is the same that I had used on the F2, and this is the, the, the Eggplane as well as the, the Freedom Models F2 set. So uh, yeah, cockpit interior is going to go down with... Radom Gray, so this is a C376, special in this kit here, but essentially, I think it's the same, pretty much the same color as the 317, if I remember right. So, let's go ahead and get started here. Mm. Let me look here, actually. Yeah, 317, that's what the instructions say. Now this uh, this front part's going to be just black, just straight black. So I think that looks nice. And if you disagree, then then you're a lion, dog-faced pony soldier. What do you think about that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna paint the ejection seats, and I just happen to have some my glass black in my airbrush at the moment. So I went ahead and just uh, added some metallic gray just to differentiate it. I, the only reason I'm using this is because I just happen to be using uh, metallic, or sorry, uh, uh, semi-gloss black because I was uh, doing the, the, the Suzuki Hustler model kit. Um, and I just threw a little bit of this in there just to, so it's not entirely black. Let's see how it turns out. Alright, there we go. 
Alright guys, so here, uh, I want the front part here to be black, and in order to do that, I'm going to use lacquer, uh, Tamiya lacquer LP60, this is NATO black, because I don't want like a totally you know, straight black. So I'm just going to cover my, use my, my thumb to cover this, this part here, because I don't want the gray to get painted over, I just want the, the nose tone area. Now here are the camera parts. Okay. Nice. Alright, I'm just gonna go all out. I'm gonna just go crazy. Put all these decals in at once. It should all go down pretty quickly anyway, so, so there. Okay. So we got like all these, these decals that go down on the, on the, the console here. And Mark Sutter. There we go. Alright, first up is first one. There we go. Oh, isn't that great? There we go. There. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Okay, that went down pretty well. Alright! Let me get these little guys out of here. Get out of here. Okay, so 94 and 95. Which ones? 94, 95. Okay, those are, these go on the either side here. And let me just get a whole bunch of this crap and just smear it all around here. Okay, great. Alright. Alright. Maybe it's not a good idea to do all those tons of decals all at once, but I don't know, we'll see. Hmm. So nice here. This is great. Okay. Great. Next are these two here. Uh, ninety two and ninety three. Okay. All these lovely deckhouse that need to go down. Cool. 
Yeah, cool. All right, now. Uh, those things that go on the side, number 105 and 114, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, that looks so cool in there right now. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you. It's cool. So shout out. Cool. Now this is going to go down here. Okay, great. Now, 115, where does that one go? Oh, okay. Got it. That is nice. That is nice. Oh my gosh, this looks so freaking cool, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Now we got one more that goes down right here. And I think we're done with the console. Hmm. Okay. So. Yeah, how's it go with Dick Ellis going down pretty nicely, I think. As long as they're... You know, it's not like a 40-year-old kid or something. It should work just fine, I think. Right? Right. Okay. And I don't think I'm missing... Oh! Wait. Oh, shoot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there is more stuff to do here. Oh, my gosh. I did not know that. Yeah, they got some cool uh, instrumentation here on this uh, this back part here. It looks like there's a, I think maybe perhaps a clear piece that needs to go down here. Uh, I'm not sure. Great. All right, I'm gonna see what's going on next. All right, I was able to salvage that situation, so I I uh, hastily painted flat black down onto that, that console there and uh, applied the decal and now I'm, 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 I'm fine so there's another like part down here where it needs to be black and then also underneath apparently there's a little decal that goes underneath there somehow I'm gonna hold off on that for now now this part O it's on this special, you know, this is for the, the RF-4, right? This is the O runner. You can see the parts with the windows and stuff. There's this tiny little part right here. This is O2, right? You see that? Now, let's clip this off of the runner. Okay. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to carefully trim this off here. There. I'm going to stick this onto this here. Doink. You see that? There. Now. Let me get my uh, paintbrush again. So I'm going to go back to the flat black. I just did acrylic flat black. And I'll just go ahead and hand paint this. There we go. Alright, once this dries... I'll be able to apply the decal, okay? So the decal involved. There's uh, this this little part. Oops. This this little decal right here, number one sixteen, goes on that O part, and this goes underneath there somehow. So at least these kind of work together apparently. There we go. It's all in place right now. The deco went down. Looking pretty darn nice, I think. So I'll also be ready for a flat coat. And of course, the seats when I get around to uh, to doing more work on the seats. Okay, so uh, next, I'm going to do these uh, these camera doohickeys, okay? So we got these little camera guys here. And I got something special planned for that. I don't want to just... Uh, do what the instructions say. I want to do something kind of special with this. Anyhow, instructions say to, to paint these things silver. So I got uh, Mr. Hobby Aquias H8 silver. I go silver away. And gosh, I didn't. I never didn't bother watching the Disney movie. They totally made the Lone Ranger into an idiot. I, I liked the Lone Ranger when I was a kid, right? But had like a, this really fancy toy, like a silver, the, the horse, put all these silver stickers all over him and looked pretty darn freaking cool. You know, Lone Ranger action figure with the mask and the hat and everything and the pistols. And like, you can put the pistols inside his, um, his uh, uh, holsters and everything, it was so cool. But, yeah, the Disney's, they have their agenda. And then they suck. Alright, so we're going to paint this thing here silver. I'm near it. On this side too. Alright. Now apparently this is like some sort of like sensor slash camera here. This, this needs to be painted silver as well. And once this paint dries, I'm going to show you something pretty darn cool. At least I think it's going to be cool. So the way this kit is, it's just, you know, the silver paint is just supposed to represent what the camera looks like. Uh, I'm going to take that a step further. Alright, so this is almost done. Looking nice. Looking nice. Okay, great. All right, now that's done. I'm gonna show you something pretty darn neat. So, by the time this ever gets uploaded, I will have shown this in one of my updates. But anyhow, so I had shown this. This is Wave H Eyes One. And you got these little neat lenses and such. Well, this is HI's 3 Mini. And I'm going to use these as camera lenses. Oh my gosh, it's going to look so cool. So stay tuned on that. Okay, now it is time to put these lenses on. Give them just about an hour to dry or so. Probably more than enough, I'm sure. Now we're going to find out which... 
which one is going to fit here? Mm, I would say this 2.5 is going to be the right size, I think. That looks like it's going to work. Okay. All right. So, wow, look at that. Isn't that great? Yeah, I'm gonna use some micro crystal clear. Derp. Uh, open. <laughs> All right. Da, 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 da. Okay. Hopefully. Oh shit. There we go. That looks cool. It's gonna look even cooler when the white glue dries, and then uh, you'll you won't see the white anymore. All right, so let's look at this. <sighs> Let me figure out which is gonna be the right size. Oh, I think that's it. 2.2. Let's look at the, this uh, 2.5 again. See if that's gonna fit or not. Uh, maybe is a little bit big. Hmm. You know, actually, you know, I don't need to attach this. Hmm. I guess I'll just go ahead and use this. Okay, phew. Why hasn't America released everyone in prison? Why hasn't America issued a shelter in place for the whole nation? Now is a good time to read up all alternatives to capitalism. All right. Nice, nice, nice. Great. Just dipped this into future floor polish. And this is looking rather nice, actually. Looking rather, rather nice. The plastic itself is kind of wasn't very clear, um, but this uh, now that I, I dipped it in future, it's like the the texture that I saw is completely gone. So in the end, this looks really nice. 
Looks really, really nice, actually. I'm, I'm rather impressed with that. That's 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 great. So this is that um, the thing that going to it's going to go on the bottom, right? Um, I'll get started with the. Uh, I'll get started with the 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 canopy as well. That's what this part is here, right? So I'm not sure if there's like two different canopies, one for open, one's for closed. Let me look here. Okay, so W1, 2, 3, and 4. W1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Well, it's going to be all of these then. Go figure. Okay, I thought there was uh, they had like different ones for the open or, or closed, but they're all the same apparently. All right, well in that case, let me remove these from the runner. Maybe, maybe I can just dip them all at the same time. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, I'll have to do two, two at a time, I guess. Then, once this is done, I get uh, the canopy masks that I bought off of Yahoo Auctions by uh, Masking Hanbai, and it really is nice. <sighs> so, I use his masks in a lot of my videos and it really saves a lot of time because I don't enjoy masking canopies really it's kind of tiresome and cumbersome and cucumbersome no that would be delicious uh, what I don't know it's just um, it's just kind of time consuming and boring now the nice thing is that he you know Lots of Tamiya and Hasegawa, and you know, some I guess Fujimi as well, maybe. Um, some Aoshima, uh, Itoleri kits, as far as the ones that uh, Tamiya have released in Japan, such as the the the, the, the strike flanker, the SU 34 fullback by Itoleri, the one I'm building. Um, that was released by Tamiya domestically, so then therefore they actually have a uh, masking set for that one. But, oh shoot, look at that. It's got something on there, I think. Speck of dust or something. Alright. All right, great. Let this dry. Give this a few days at least, just to make sure, I guess, and then I'll uh, apply the the masking because I don't want the masking to go down when it's slightly tacky or whatever and disrupt the the the, the smooth surface on that because that would not be good. But yeah, unfortunately, there are no masking for egg planes or anything like that, unfortunately, or airfix for that matter. Um, but for what he does have. It's, uh, it's it is nice. It is, makes it a lot more convenient. So anyhow, I'll, I'll stop talking.